All right, welcome back. Uh, we are now officially into Substance Painter. In the last two episodes, we talked about how to prep your Blender project to get it ready for Substance Painter, how to export it out of Blender, and then import it into Substance Painter. And now I'm going to start talking about how to do things in Substance Painter. So I've got my desktop set up. I've got my properties window over here um, on the side. I've got my layers here, and I've got my assets on the bottom. Um, there are other windows here you can select and move um, into your workspace. If you have multiple monitors, I strongly suggest moving these uh, these sub windows off onto the side because they really do eat into your work area. But for recording reasons, I've got to have them here, so we're kind of cramped. Uh, I thought I'd start off talking about bump maps or uh, normal maps, you know, the height maps and normal maps, because I like to start there and then um, see how they look in Blender before I actually do the colors and the other things, because the normals and the heights are much more dependent upon the resolution of your files for their quality. You know, you, can, you can't really do a really good bump map unless you just have enough texture space. Otherwise, it's going to look very pixelated. So we have a fairly large UDIM on this, so I'm hoping that we get reasonably good resolution on our normals and bumps. So we've got 30 UV tiles for the main body, which is a fair amount. Right now, in the uh, workspace, I'm running at the, a 2048 size. You can change this while you're working. If your machine starts to bog down, you can pick lower numbers, but then the quality of your workspace is going to, it's going to go down. Um, you can export at a higher value. This is a non-destructive value. It's not like you're locking into something lower. It just means that uh, your workspace is going to render at that, that size um, and therefore be faster or slower depending on what you pick. So we'll try 2048, although we'll export at 4096 to get better resolution. So the, the normals and the bumps are probably going to look a little pixelated unless we bump it up. So how do I create a normal map? I thought I'd talk about rivets and screws, uh, and I prefer to do those in normals, but doing them in bump is pretty much the same process. And we need to create a layer. So I'm going to create a paint layer. And once we create the layer, I picked my brush. And now you can see the properties of that paintbrush over here. And we can adjust the size and stuff over there. The big thing that I like about this basic soft is this alpha. It's a nice gradient from the middle out so that when, you're, when you've got a tool in here, it's going to make a nice smooth transition from the rivet or screw or whatever you're using uh, onto, your, onto your surface. If you use something like a hard brush, you get hard edges. It wouldn't be as convincing. All right, so the next thing to do is to pick a normal. And under here, under uh, textures, any of these blue icons here are normals. And there are several that could be used for fasteners, right? Those could be if you wanted to. Um, got basic on, there's more than that. I had a filter on. So any of these blue things could be used as a filter. There's other stuff in here as well. But down here at the bottom, there's some screws. And we'll try a slot screw. Try this one. All you do is drag it into that normal. And now it's a matter of sizing it. So I'm going to use my left square brackets to size it. Scroll wheel to zoom in. That's probably still a little big. Probably want to fine tune that. So maybe like 0.25. See what that looks like. And then click on it. And there we have our first screw. All right, like I said, it's going to be a little rough around the edges because we're working at 2048 and not 4096. Maybe make it a little smaller. Maybe make it 0.22. i put a screw there. Screw there, and you can change um, some of these other settings. So, for example, angle jitter is a good thing to change. We're doing something like a screw because then each time you click on it, the screw head's going to be a little different. That's going to give you some variety in your screws. Let's say we wanted to do some rivets, and all the way down here at the bottom is this this one here. I kind of like that for rivets, so I'm going to take this one and drag it into here. Now it's going to be my rivet uh, template or brush. And if I click, you can see I've got a little tiny rivet there because the size of the rivet is different than the size of the screw. So I have to adjust the size of my rivet, so maybe try putting like eight and see how that looks. Scroll out, it might be, might be a little big, maybe try seven, five. All right, and we'll probably space these out. We'll try like 150, see how that works. So click, and then if I hold the shift and the control key down, I can lock the cursor or lock the line to a set number of angles, like maybe 15 degrees. So I do that and you can see I space them out. I obviously too far spaced out at 100, and probably still too big, so maybe try 0.6 and try maybe 50. No, I don't want flow with 50, I want spacing to be 100. Yeah, flow is the wrong thing to change. Because that would just change how strong an effect it is. All right, so maybe a little closer together than that. So spacing 80. And this is really dependent upon the size of your project, and the size of your uh, texture sets, you know, how, how big your UDIMs and stuff are. Um, maybe just a little bit tighter than that. Try 70. And once you get this set, so, okay, let's say I'm happy with that. I can right-click on this, and I can say create a tool preset. And that'll come down here, and I can rename it. I'm going to call it ME109 Rivets. And now, if I ever need to find it again, if I look for ME109 
rivets. Here's my search, and then there it is. So I can set my tool back to that. So if I had gone and you know picked a soft brush or one of these other brushes here, it's going to maintain the the normal from the previous thing. But now if I go back in here and type me. 109 again. I can find my ME109 thing, and you can see it resets everything back to what it was, and I can go right back with certainty, you know, making exactly the same rivets that I did before. Now, what I would recommend is don't go crazy at this point and rivet your whole plane. I think it's a good idea to put some on, just kind of around in general, I'm not really paying particular attention to where they're going. Obviously, I'm not putting rivets where they would normally be. I'm just kind of slapping some things down here, because the next step is to go export this, bring it into Blender, and see how it looks there. Because uh, I found that sometimes things look really good in Substance Painter, but they don't look so good in Blender. So before you spend a ton of time really detail riveting, uh, you might want to see how these look in Blender. So I'm just saving the file here. All right, so now to get our textures out, we go to File and Export Textures. And here's our, our you know, dialog box for this. I've already chosen where I want to put my Substance Painter texture files. I've chosen the Documents Channels Normal AO Alpha or No Alpha from this list here. And the reason I did that is because it gives me the option of an OpenGL normal, which is what Blender wants. There's other normals, um, but these don't work particularly well in Blender. You, depending on the angle of the normal, it's going to look weird. So you want to use the OpenGL one. Um, so just choose a, you know, choose a um, template that has the ability to choose OpenGL. And I've already deselected all of these except for the OpenGL because we're only testing our normal, and I'm not going to export our interior textures at all because we don't care right now. The other thing I did is by default. Um, it's going to be based on the texture set size. Remember at the beginning of this tutorial, I said we're working in our workspace at 2048, um, which then would output 2048 size tiles, but I'd like it to be 4096 when we output it. So that's what I mean by it's not it's, it's not destructive when you set that value early. You can uh, pick a different value on the way out. You just have to override it. And we'll try 8 bits to begin with and see how that works. So now I can export. All right, that's done. I want to save my settings. Now let's go into Blender and Here's our plane, and I'm just going to focus on where I put the rivets instead of rendering the whole thing. And we're going to create a new shader for this. So it's going to be a principal shader, shader principal. Of course, I'm using Node Wrangler because it's a thing, right? Um, and I want to put this into our normal. And we're hooked up onto UVs. And I'm going to add a vector normal map, stick it in there, and then I want to open up our normal files that we just generated. So here are the normal files that Substance Painter created. You can see they're all numbered because it's a UDIM. And all I have to do is select the first one and then open image. And uh, Blender will automatically detect that it's a UDIM. So it'll change this from single image to UDIM and it'll set it to, it may or may not set it to non-color, but you want to make sure that it's non-color because we're working with the normal. All right, so and let's take this and move the roughness down, make it shiny, um, maybe make it a little darker and make it metallic. Now let's take a look at those rivets and screws here just to see how they turned up. Sometimes I found that normals and bump maps are overly sensitive in Blender and they need to be turned down. Um, but those look, at least they look pretty clean. They're, they're certainly too intense. And we can either change the intensity here in Blender by changing it here inside the normal map. So if I change it to 0.2, it certainly cuts them back quite a bit, makes them smoother. And one, even more subtle. Uh, within Substance Painter, we can change the effect of our normals and heights and other other things by changing the appropriate channel values here. So you can see here we've got a drop down that has different channels on it, color, height, We're working the normals right now. So if I select normal, whatever you choose here is going to reflect these, or whatever these values here are, are related to whatever's dropped down here, whatever's selected. So this is a value for base color. This is a value now for metallic. These are values now for normals. And this 100% here is how much strength there is associated or how strong this effect is. So I take it all the way to zero, everything disappears. So you can effectively change how strong your normals and bumps are here. I found that sometimes, even setting this to one, you can't set this to anything, you, can, you can't set it to fractions. Um, sometimes setting it to one still is too strong inside of Blender. Uh, what you can do then is you can create a folder, right? and then I can take my rivets, drop them into my folder, and then I could maybe say, put this at 50%, and it's really taking 50% of 1%. So it, if, you, if you find that you really need to go less than one, this is a hack you can get around and do that. Um, but for right now, I think we're okay with just the one, uh, and then, you know, the blender render, I think these look pretty good. Like I said, we can adjust them on either side. So that's how I do rivets and screws. Um, what I think I'm going to do then is I'm just going to go, since things, since they look good here, I'm going to go ahead and 
um, you know, put all those details onto my model. And then in the next tutorial, we'll talk about something else. I haven't decided what, but uh, it'll be in the cards. All right, I'll see you there.